Good evening, boys and girls. We are going to start tonight with lesson 12.1, measurement benchmarks. Now you have a packet that you should be following along with me and writing notes in. It says, how can you use benchmarks to understand the relative size of measurement units? So let's go ahead and get started with our lesson. Okay, let's talk about our benchmarks of length, weight, and liquid volume. Well, we're going to be talking about customary units, which is what we use in the United States to measure something. And what we're going to do is, if you think about a benchmark, we know that benchmarks give us a way to estimate the amount of something or what something is. So remember that we used benchmarks when we were talking about fractions. We used zero, we used a half, and we used a whole as our benchmarks, and that could tell us where a fraction would be on a number line or how big or how small it would be compared to others. So that's what a benchmark for measurement is. We can use it to estimate the length, the width, the weight, or the volume of it with a lick for liquid. So let's look at our customary units of length how long or how tall something is. About an inch would be from your tip of your finger to your first knuckle. For one foot, if I had one foot, that would be about the size of a license plate. One yard would be about the length of a baseball bat. And one mile would be, if I were to walk for about 20 minutes, that would be the distance of one mile. Now, what if we wanted to weigh something? About one ounce would be a few colored pencils, so it's very light. About one pound would be a whole loaf of bread. And about one ton would, is very big. That would be about the size of a car or an elephant. Now, the customary units of liquid volume. So if we wanted to know how much liquid there was, one cup or eight fluid ounces would be about a glass of water one pint is a little bit bigger than the cartons of milk that you get at school. One quart would be if you had two of these pints. One half gallon would be if you have two of these half gallons, that would be in a whole gallon of milk. And one gallon would be what you would see for a gallon of milk at the store. Now, now that we know the benchmarks for the customary units, we're going to come and see what would we use to measure something. It says choose the customary units you would use to measure each. Now if I had the height of a computer, well that means I want to measure length. Would I use an inch, a foot, a yard, or would I use miles? Well miles would be too big, a yard would still be too big. We could use inches but it might take us long. I would say we would use a foot to measure the computer, the length of the computer, or the height. Now, for numbers 2, 3, and 4, I want you to try those on your own. So press pause and work on those, and press play when you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, let's look at the benchmarks that you put. For the weight of a table, well, we know we're in weight, so we would probably use pounds. Tons would be too big, ounces would be too small. We would use pounds. For the length of the semi-truck, we would use yards. Inches and feet would probably be too small, and a mile would be way too big, so we're going to use the yards. And for the amount of liquid in a bathtub, all of the smaller units of liquid volume would be too small. We could use half gallons, but it would take us longer. We would want to use a gallon because a bathtub is really big. I hope you got those right. Let's go on to the next problems. Okay, now we're going to talk about the metric system. Now, in other countries, when they weigh something or they find the length or height or how much liquid is in something, then they use the metric system. Here in the United States, we use the customary units, but it's very important that we know both. And also in science, you mostly use the metric system as well. So we're going to talk about the metric units of length, and we're going to talk about the benchmark to help us estimate. 
So if we look, we have a millimeter. So one millimeter is very, very, very small. If you were to look at your ruler and you looked at the centimeter side, there would be 10 of these tiny lines from one centimeter to the other centimeter. And one of those is a millimeter, so it's very tiny. One centimeter would be about the width of your finger. One decimeter would be about the width of your hand. About one meter would be the width of a door. And one kilometer is if you were to walk for about 10 minutes. Now let's look at the metric units of mass. About one gram would be if we were to weigh a dollar bill. So it's very, very light. And about one kilogram would be the weight of or the mass of a baseball bat. So it's definitely heavier than a gram. Now let's look at the metric units of liquid volume. So if we wanted to know how much liquid was in something, one millimeter would be about one drop of this, of one of the droppers. And one liter would be kind of like a, the size of a jug of Gatorade or something like that, like a half jug or half gallon. Now, we're going to use the benchmarks to choose the metric unit. So we're just using the metric units and to see which would we use to measure. So we sa it says the mass of a grasshopper. So we're going to be in mass. Now, would we use a kilogram or would we use a one gram. Now a grasshopper is very light, so we would probably use grams. Now let's look at number six. It says the amount of liquid a water bottle holds. Well, we would probably use a liter to measure how much water a water bottle holds. Now I want you to look at number seven and eight. I want you to think which metric units would we use to measure the length of a soccer field or the length of a pencil. So go ahead, pause the video, write those answers in, and press play when you're ready to go over the answer with me. Okay, for the length of a soccer field, we would probably use a meter to measure that. And for the length of a pencil, I would say that we could use centimeters or we could also use decimeters as well. So I will take either one of those answers. Okay, for these three problems, I want you to circle the better estimate. So you're going to have to circle which one would you use to measure the mass of a chicken egg, the length of a car, or the amount of liquid a drinking glass holds. So go ahead and you're going to circle which ones you think would be for the, the objects above, and then press play when you're ready to go over your answers. Okay, let's go over our answers. So the mass of a chicken egg, well, a chicken egg is very light. And remember, kilograms are, one kilogram would be about how much a baseball bat would be, the mass of a baseball bat. But we would probably use grams because one gram is the mass of a $1 bill. So 50 grams would be a good estimate for the mass of a chicken egg. The length of a car, we would say 12 feet. 12 miles, well, one mile is about 20 minutes of walking. Okay, 12 feet would probably be a better estimate because one foot is about the size of a license plate. The amount of liquid a drinking glass holds would be eight ounces. Eight quarts would be way too much. We just have one glass of water, that's all. So eight ounces would be the better estimate. I hope you got those right. Okay, boys and girls, since we're putting two lessons in one, we are going to move on to lesson 12.5, and it's called line plots. So our essential question is, how can you make and interpret line plots with fractional data? So we're going to be looking at data and we're going to be making line plots with them. And we're going to see how can we read those line plots. So let's get started with lesson 12.5. Well, first we have to understand what is a line plot. A line plot is a graph, 
that shows the frequency, so how often something happens, of data, the information, along a number line. So if you look here, I have an example of a line plot. And it has a title, okay? It's for stuffed animals. And it has a number line here, so going from 0 to 5. And then this is saying that this is the number of stuffed animals. Well, let's look at our question. It says Sarah counted how many stuffed animals each student has. So if I come over here and look at my line plot, I can see that this is the number of stuffed animals that there are. And this would be the number of students that has that many stuffed animals. So let's look at our question. How many students have three or more stuffed animals? Well, let's look at our line plot. I can see that zero stuffed animals, this is how many students have zero stuffed animals. One stuffed animal, this is how many students. Each X represents a student. And so that's how many students have one stuffed animal. Two stuffed animals, we don't have anything, so that means that there are no students that have only two. Now, they said three or more, so we can say, oh, well, one, two, three students have three of them, but we have or more, so we've got to go more than three as well. So three, four, five, six. So six students have three or more stuffed animals animals. And that's how we read a line plot. Well, now we're going to look at how we could make a line plot and we're going to use a tally chart as well. So let's look at what we're working with. It says some students compared the time they spend riding the school bus. Complete the tally table and the line plot to show the data. So data is just the information that they give us. Now here is the information that they give us. This is the time spent on the school bus, and it's in hours. So we can see that these students, that's how long, and it's in fraction form, they spent riding the school bus. Okay? Now each one of them is represents one student's time on the school bus. Now we have a tally chart. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our, our fractions are in order from least to greatest on our tally chart. So as you can see, our smallest fraction that we have is one-sixth. So we're going to put a one-sixth here, and then our next fraction would be two-sixths. And then we have a 3 sixth, And then our biggest fraction, our greatest fra fractional value would be 4 sixth. Well, now we have to put the tallies for how many of those 1 sixth we have in our data. So how many students rode the bus 1 sixth hours? So as you can see, I have 1 sixth. I have it once and twice. So that means that we need two tallies for 1 sixth. Now let's look at 2 sixths. How many times do I have 2 sixths in my data? Oh, well, only one student rode the bus 2 sixths hours. So we're going to write just one tally. Now for 3 sixths, I have that 1, 2, 3, 4 times. That's for 4 students that rode the bus 3 sixths hour. So we're going to write 4 tallies for the three-sixths. And then for our four-sixths, we only have one four-sixths. So that gives me one tally. Now we made our tally chart. Now we have to come and make our line plot. Well, we're gonna make a line plot, and they already have it here for us. And we are going to list the fractions that we have in our tally chart we're going to list them on the line plot from least to greatest. Well, we have 1 sixth, 2 sixth, 3 sixth, and 4 sixth. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put an X each time we have each of the fractions. And that's representing a student that rode the bus that, meant that long. So it's just transferring the information from our tally chart to the line plot. So as you can see, 
two students rode the bus one sixth hour, so I need two X's. And then for two sixths, I only have one tally. So that's one X, that's for one student. And I would like you guys to finish the line plot. So go ahead and put the X's for three sixths and four sixths. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, for three sixths, you should have had four X's because that's for the four students and because I had three sixths four times in my data that rode the bus three sixths hours. And for the four six, we only had one tally for one student. So we just put one X. Now we made our tally chart, we made our line plot, and now we're gonna answer some questions. How many students compared times? So basically, how many students gave their time that they spent riding the school bus? We just have to count up our fractions or we could even just count up our, ta our, our X's on our line plot. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight students participated in the survey to tell how long they spent riding the school bus. Number three, what is the difference between the longest time and the shortest time? So I know that you heard that word difference. So we are going to subtract, and we're going to subtract the longest time. And what's the longest time someone spent? That's the greater fraction, right? Four sixths. So we're going to take our four sixths, and we're going to subtract the shortest time, which is one sixth. And we definitely can do that. Four sixth minus one sixth. Well, we have same denominator, so we're just looking at the numerators. Four minus one is three, and our denominator is six. Three six, and I know you are already thinking that that is equal to one half. So that is the difference between the longest time and the shortest time students spent riding the bus. Okay, boys and girls, that was an introduction to our 12.1 benchmarks and 12.5 line plots lesson. So I would like you to try four problems on your own for homework. We're going to look at the first two problems are going to be dealing with the benchmarks. And then the last two problems, you're going to be looking at this line plot to answer the two questions. Okay, now go ahead and you're going to be doing this in your packet. And good luck with your homework tonight. Don't forget to put your level, how you feel after watching the video on your packet as well. I hope that you have a good night and we will see you tomorrow in class. Bye.